Professor Jigoro Kano emphasized the importance of kata and randori in judo training. After founding Kodokan in 1982, he spent the next five years establishing such forms as nage no kata and ju no kata. Practicing the kata will help you to learn how to manage the body in attack and defense situations and how to employ your strength effectively. The kata enables you to go through the motions of attack and defense slowly and precisely. Since the forms incorporate all the basic movements of pushing, pulling, bending, stretching, turning and twisting, they're very effective for conditioning and developing the entire body, providing an effective form of physical education. Juno kata consists of 15 techniques which are arranged in three sets of five. The names are based on what Uke does to initiate the attack. Let's see the 15 techniques performed consecutively, starting from the very beginning. Tori is on the right, and Uke on the left, facing shoremen. When they're about 5.5 meters apart, they turn and make a standing bow to shoremen. They then face each other and bow. At the same time, they step forward with their left foot and assume Shizen Hontai, basic natural posture. Set 1, Ippon Me, Tsukidashi, hand thrusting. Uke aims at Tori's Uto, the point between his eyebrows. Tori evades the blow and grabs Uke's wrist to pull his arms back, stepping back to break Uke's balance and control him. Nihon Me, Kataoshi, shoulder push. This shows how Uke pushes Tori's shoulder from behind with one hand and how Tori responds. Tori draws Uke's hands up and back to control him. Sanbon me ryote dori, seizing both hands. This demonstrates the timing and way in which Tori breaks Uke's holes on both his wrists and goes into nagewaza. Tori stretches his knees and bends forwards to control Uke. Yonhon me katamawashi, shoulder turn. This shows how Uke uses his strength to turn Tori's body towards him. It also demonstrates the principles which allow Tori to respond and turn his body around to execute an ippon seoi nage. Kohon me angooshi, jaw push. This shows what Tori does when Uke pushes his jaw from the side and attempts to strike him between the eyebrows. Moving on now to set two. Ippon me kiriyoroshi, downward cut. This shows how Uke aims to strike the top of Tori's head with a tegatana, the knife edge of his hand, and how Tori retaliates by seizing Uke's right hand, pivoting on his left foot to turn and control Uke. Nihon me ryokataoshi, double shoulder push. Tori takes advantage of the way Uke pushes down on his shoulders from behind by crouching down and grabbing Uke's right wrist to counterattack. The main points are the way in which Tori lowers his body and how Uke tries to resist by pushing against Tori's hips with his left hand. Sanbon me naname uchi, slanting strike. Uke attempts a slanting strike from the right, aiming right between Tori's eyebrows. After evading the blow, Tori lifts Uke up in the style of uranage. Yonhon me katate dori, single hand seizure. Uke takes Tori's right wrist. Tori responds by pulling his arm away to break Uke's grip and restrain his elbow, loading Uke onto his hip in the style of hidari ukigoshi. Goshi. 
5本目、片手上げ、シングルハンド・レイジング。Both opponents raise their right arms and approach each other. Just before they collide, Tori turns his body and restrains Uke, making sure not to bend sideways. And now to set three, Ippon me obi tori belt seizure. Uke tries to take hold of Tori's belt from the front. Tori catches Uke's left hand, and after meeting some resistance, he restrains him with a hidari ukigoshi. Nihon me mune oshi chest push. Mune oshi is a demonstration of the principles of attack and defense, beginning with a push against the chest. After countering Uke's attack with a chest push, Tori restrains Uke's right arm and left elbow, pushing back diagonally to the right to break his balance. Sanbon me tsukiyage uppercut. Uke aims an uppercut at Tori's chin with his right fist. Tori evades this, and after meeting some resistance, he traps Uke's right arm in the style of ude garami. Yonhon me, uchioroshi, downward strike. In uchioroshi, Uke attempts to strike the top of Tori's head with his right fist. Tori evades this and applies a hadakajime and haragatame to restrain Uke's left elbow. Gohon me, Ryogansuki, thrust to both eyes. Uke attempts to poke both of Tori's eyes. The confrontation ends with Tori applying a hidari ukigoshi. After finishing all 15 techniques, both opponents return to their starting positions and face each other in Shizen Hontai. After bowing to each other, they turn towards shoumen and bow to conclude the Jū no kata. Set 1, Tsukidashi, hand thrusting. This is what the tori does when the uke aims at the uto, the point between the eyebrows, and grabs his wrists. The UK raises his right arm and moves forward, fingers extended and held together. On his third step, he aims at the uto, the point between the eyebrows. Dodge the blow and take the UK's right wrist, then lean back, pulling him with you. The UK drops his left shoulder and twists his body around to pull you backward. You then drop your right shoulder and twist your body to take hold of his wrists. Pull his arms back and step back to break his balance. Let's take a closer look at how the uke renews his grip on the tori's wrists. Notice the uke's left hand. His thumb is facing upwards. And now the feet. The uke is towards you. In order to break the uke's balance, you have to pull his arms out and back. Tori should use an overhand grip when seizing Uke's wrists.
And now from Tsukidashi to Kataoshi or Shoulder Push. Kataoshi shows how the uke pushes the tori's shoulder with one hand and how the tori responds. The main points are the angle at which the tori bends forward and how he controls the uke's right hand. The tori bends forward as the uke pushes his right shoulder. You then move backward, starting with your right foot, and grab the uke's right hand and pull him up and back to break his balance. The tori grabs the little finger side of the uke's right hand. This shows the uke aiming for the uto, the point between the eyebrows. He positions his left hand against his hip and strikes. The tori grabs little finger side of the uke's left hand and pulls both hands up and back. Watch again. When the uke has been fully controlled, he draws one of his feet back to signal defeat. And now from kataoshi to ryotedori or seizure of both hands. Ryotedori shows how to break your partner's hold and throw him when he grabs both your wrists. Pull your hands back and step slightly back with your left foot to break his balance. Then load him onto your hip and lift him. The uke arches his body and brings both legs together. The main point in breaking the uke's balance is for you to pull with your left hand as you step back with your law not to grab his judogi. This is how to signal defeat. Moving on now from ryotedori to katamawashi or shoulder turn. Katamawashi shows how the uke uses his strength to turn the tori's body towards him. It also demonstrates the principles which allow the tori to execute a seonage. Notice the tori's body control and the use of his left hand. In order to throw the uke over his right shoulder in a mingi ippon seoinage, the tori puts his right shoulder in the uke's right armpit and places his right hand on the uke's right shoulder. Look at the way the uke turns the tori's shoulders and how the tori uses his hands to respond. Take note of the tori's left hand. The right shoulder has to come right under the armpit in order to execute a seoinage properly.
From Katamawashi, we now move on to Agooshi or Jōpush. Agooshi shows what to do when the uke pushes your jaw from the side and attempts to strike you between the eyebrows or uto. It's important to turn your body after grabbing the uke's right hand and after evading the uke's strike at the uto. The uke moves forward, raising his right arm, fingers together and extended. On his third step, he tries to push the side of your jaw. This is how to restrain the uke when he attempts to strike your uto. Pull his arms up and then bring his hands down to his shoulders and break his balance to the rear. This is how to restrain the uke's right hand. The uke strikes at the uto with his fingers extended and together. The tori catches the uke's hand from the top so that his thumb is pressed against the uke's palm. And now from angooshi to the first technique in set two, kiriyoroshi o downward cut. Kiriyoroshi shows how the uke aims to strike the top of the tori's head with a downward cut and how the tori retaliates. The left hand side of the uke's body is turned towards you. From this position, he raises his right hand and attempts to strike the top of your head with the knife edge of his hand. This is how the tori controls the uke's hand sword. Avoid the cut by pulling in your jaw and bending back. When the uke's hand sword is at stomach level, take his wrist from above. Notice how the tori grabs the uke's right hand and then the left. The tori reaches under his right arm and grabs the uke's left hand. Moving on now from Kiriyoroshi to Ryokata Oshi or Two Shoulder Push. Ryokata Oshi shows how you can take advantage of the way your opponent pushes down on your shoulders from behind to grab his right wrist and counter-attack. The important thing is to twist your body round while bending your knees when the uke attempts to push down on your shoulders. The uke tries to resist by pushing against your hips with his left hand. However, pull him forward several steps and extend your left arm across his chest to break his balance. Let's take another look at how the tori lowers his body. Notice the timing and the way he grabs the uke's hand. 
the UK tries to maintain his balance by pressing his left hand against the Tory's hips. Let's look at the way the Tory lowers his body and grabs the Uke's right hand from a different angle. The Tory takes the Uke's right hand with his left, then right, then left again. And this is how the uke uses his left hand to resist. It's difficult to bend your knees and twist at the same time, but it's important to master the correct movements. And now from Ryokata Oshi to Naname Uchi o Slanting Strike. In Naname Uchi, the uke attempts to strike the uto with the knife edge of his hand. You evade the blow and restrain him by picking him up. The uke attempts a slanting strike from the right, aiming right at the uto. After evading the blow, the tori lifts the uke up in the style of uranage. Be sure to strike at an angle when aiming between the eyes. The tori restrains the uke's right wrist and aims for the uto. After battling each other, the tori lifts the uke up in the style of uranage. The uke holds his legs together and extends his arms straight above his head and claps to signal defeat. Notice how the uke delivers an accurate strike at the uto and how the tori responds. Let's look at this from the other side. And now from Naname Uchi to the fourth technique in set two, Katate Dori or single hand seizure. Katate Dori begins with the uke taking your right wrist. You respond by pulling your arm away to break his grip, loading him onto your hip in the style of Hidari Ukigoshi. Restrain the uke's left arm and go into hidari ukigoshi. In order to lift the uke's legs up high, you have to bend forward as in ogoshi. Watch how the tori steps forward to the left with his right foot and how he uses his arms to execute the hip throw. And now from katate dori to katate ange o single hand raising. In katate ange, both opponents raise their right arms and approach each other. Just before they collide, the tori turns his body and restrains the uke.
watch how the Tori steps back with his right foot and turns just as they're about to collide. Both raise their right arms together, palms forward, and come up on their toes. As they're about to collide, the Tori steps back with his right foot and turns to the right. He then bends the Aka's body to the right, then left. And finally, he breaks his balance to the rear. The Tori must make sure not to bend sideways. The Tori avoids the Uke's right hand, turns, and bends the Uke's body to the right, and then left. He then catches the Uke's right wrist, takes a step back, and breaks his balance. Watch how the Tori uses his right hand to restrain the Uke's right elbow. The fingers should be pointing down. And now from Katateange to the first technique in set three, Obitori o Belt Seizure. Obitori begins with the uke trying to take hold of the tori's belt from the front. The tori catches the uke's left arm, and after meeting some resistance, he restrains him with a hidari ukigoshi. Notice the way the tori restrains the uke's arms. Let's look at the process of attack and defense. The Tori uses his left hand to restrain the Uke's left elbow. Here's how the Uke counters the Tori's attack. Let's take a close look at the movement of their feet. The uke pats the tori's right hip to signal defeat. The tori lowers the uke and they return to their original positions. And now to the second technique in set three, mune oshi o chest push. Mune oshi is a demonstration of the principles of attack and defense, beginning with a push against the chest. After the uke attacks and the tori counters with a chest push, the Tori pulls his right shoulder back and turns around in a complete circle, forcing the Uke to do the same. The Tori presses the Uke's left elbow back diagonally to the right to break his balance. Let's take another look at how the Uke pushes against the Tori's chest and how the Tori responds. And now from a different angle. Let's look at the action from the other side.
And now from Muneoshi to Tsukiyage or Uppercut. Tsukiyage begins with the uke aiming an uppercut at your chin with his right fist. You evade this and trap his right arm in the style of udegarami. Notice the way the tori uses his hands to evade the uke's uppercut and restrain him. The uke raises his right arm, hand open, and clenches his fist as he swings his arm down for the uppercut. When applying udegarami, the tori steps forward with his left, then right, to break the uke's balance to the rear. In the uppercut, the uke should aim the front of his fist at the tori's chin. The tori leans back and turns the uke around, restraining him in the style of udegarabi. The tori catches the uke's fist with his right hand. At the same time, he places his left hand on the uke's elbow. Let's take a closer look at the Tori's feet. And now from Tsukiyage to Uchioroshi o downward strike. In Uchioroshi, the Uke attempts to strike the top of your head with his fist. You evade this and step around behind him to apply an arm lock to his left in Hadakajime. The uke clenches his fist as he brings his arm down and up and aims the back of his fist at the top of your head. You avoid the blow and grab his right wrist with your right to break his balance to the right rear corner. You then take his left wrist and step around behind him to apply hadakajime and lock his left elbow. Observe the tori's movements and the uke's response, and how the tori applies the hadakajime and elbow lock. The tori pulls in his chin and leans back to evade the blow. He then grabs the uke's right wrist, then left, to restrain him. Watch how the tori catches the uke's left wrist. Take a close look at the hadakajime and elbow lock. Notice how the tori pulls the uke's left wrist to his hip. And now from Uchioroshi to the final technique, Ryogan Tsuki or thrust to both eyes. The uke tries to poke both of the tori's eyes. The confrontation ends with the tori applying a hidari ukigoshi. The tori evades the blow by stepping back with his left foot, thrusts at the uke's eyes with his left hand, 
and applies an ukigoshi. The movements should not be rushed. Let's look at it from the other side. This is the style used in the poke at the eyes. The Juno Kata incorporates all the basic movements of pushing, pulling, bending, stretching, turning, and pulling. The Kata enables you to go through the motions of attack and defense slowly. Regular practice will therefore help you master the principles of attack and defense, the ideal frame of mind, and the effective use of your body and strength. The most important thing is to be precise in carrying out each and every motion of attack and defense. <laughs>